So, some exciting news. The plutonium box replica I made is going to join the collection at the Bradbury Science Museum at Los Alamos, which I'm very proud of. But there's one problem, as far as I can see, is that, you know, this is the handle assembly, and that's all fine, except the knurling on the little bolts I made is terrible. I'm no good at knurling, um, particularly not in stainless. So I am going to remake these today before I ship the box out because, um, you know, professional pride, let's say. So let's get started. Okay, here we go. Got these made up. Now you might be noticing, hey, there's no knurling. And now that you've parted them off, how are you going to do that? Well, because like I said, I really suck at knurling on the lathe. So I decided just to do my absolute best for the museum. I'm going to go do this on the mill instead. Be a little bit fancier, take this to a kind of silly degree, because, you know, why not? So let's head over. This is what I have set up. I've knotted the head on the mill over 45 degrees. And if you look down here on the table, I have the indexing head set up. And there's one of the bolts I just made, screwed into a simple mandrel to move it out from the head enough to give clearance. I have the longest end mill that I currently have set up in the mill. Um, it needs to be that long, otherwise the quill will start to interfere with the uh, indexing head. Anyway, so it's centered in Y. So then I raise, I'll raise the table up and just move back and forth a little bit in X and cut a nice V slot in the head of the bolt. And that'll be much nicer and early than I can do on the lathe. So on the indexing head side, for this one I have it set up. We're on the outer ring here, which is 33. The uh, sector arms are set for 27. So for each cut, I will advance it. So if we would bend here, I'd advance it one full rotation and then 27 33rds of another rotation. And that will, if, uh, if my math is correct, that will give 22 revolutions, um, which should be a good number for that. And then I do it all again for the other one with a little surprise, but we'll get to that later. And there's the first one done. It's pretty good. I'm going to go clean it up on the lathe while I still have it on this mandrel. Just put a slight bevel on each side. I think it's looking pretty good.
yeah just eyeballed it with this chamfering tool I made a long time ago but uh, yeah I think that looks pretty great well <laughs> I suppose since okay gotta remove this the other thing I've learned about this this thing just eats knuckles alive so I always remove that out of habit now painfully learned habit anyway um, since this is a thumb screw, let's see if I can take it out by hand. Oh, yeah, that works great. Yeah. Clean that up and uh, I'll probably go through and hit all of the, just slightly hit them with a file. It's a little bit of a burr on each side, but uh, yes, this is something I can send off to a museum and not be ashamed of. I'm getting set up for the for cutting the knurling on the second of the bolts, but I'm going to change the indexing head a little bit. So the moment um, this pin is going to the holes on the outermost ring, which you probably can't see, but it says 33. There are 33 holes around the outside. And for this next one, I'm going to move it in so that instead it's in this inner this narrow ring here which is which is 23 instead this thing's kind of a pain to do um, so why am I changing that because the previous the previous one I cut 22 slots around the outside um, and the math worked out to one full rotation in 17 and 27 30 sec 30 thirds I can't get any of that right. One rotation in 27 30 thirds, which you might notice is the same as one rotation and um, 9 elevenths. This is just easier because I already had a 33 plate on. Um, for this one, I'm going to do 23 rotations. And that one means one full rotation and 17 20 thirds. So I'll one full rotation and 17 holes on this second innermost ring. So I'll leave it up to the uh, mathematicians out in the audience to think why I might want one of these to have 22 and one of these to have 23, but I figure if you have a chance to add some hidden numerological significance to a project, why wouldn't you do it? Okay, there we go. Two new bolts, screws, I don't know, whatever you want to call them. Much nicer knurls than before, much more regular. Yeah, I like this a lot better. They serve the same purpose, of course. Attaching the handle to these brackets. Ah, uh, but they screw on so much nicer now. Let's, uh, let's go see what it looks like on the box itself. And here it is, back on the box. Just screw these down. I also realized while taking this off this morning that the thermometer has just a simple adjustment screw in the back, so there was no reason not to have it point to, you know, a bit over 100 degrees Fahrenheit for the equivalent of room, temp room temperature. I've been spending much of time thinking like, hmm, if I cut it open, can I adjust the bimetallic strip and shim it? And it turned out to be way simpler than that. Just get this screwed back down. handle and as before I can adjust it. It stays up nicely but can still fold down. Yeah I think that's good. I think 
this is ready to be sent off to the Bradbury Science Museum. <laughs>